Tonight's Democrats candidate debate had 12 candidates on the stage at the same time. It was the first time we'd seen Tulsi Gabbard in a while, but it was smart because she used the opportunity to audition for her next job, not as president of the United States, but rather as a commentator for CNN. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> Good one. I'm so glad you're next to me. I didn't think that one was very... Ah, oh, this is great. Uh, Tom Steyer pointed out that this was the first time he was on a debate stage, adding that until that very moment... Even he didn't know he was running for president. Elizabeth Warren repeatedly refused to answer the question as to whether or not she would raise taxes on the middle class to pay for Medicare for all. But she doesn't need to answer the question because we all know that Mexico is going to pay for it. In discussing the importance of preserving competition in the tech industry, Alan Yang took a shot at Bing, Andrew. which if... Oh, yeah. Alan's another guy that I know, though. <laughs> that's, how, that's how great the campaign's going. Hey, you didn't give me $1,000. In discussing the importance of preserving competition in the tech industry, Andrew? Yes. <laughs> Andrew Yang took a shot at Bing, which if you're like me, you had to ask Jeeves what the heck Bing is. And you also had to ask Jeeves, who's the Yang running for president? In response to a question as to whether or not the impeachment investigation is a distraction from the important work that needs to be done, Julian Castro said we can walk and chew gum at the same time. I thought of Drexel. <laughs> Speak for yourself, said Joe Biden as he fell off the debate stage trying to pick up a piece of gum that <laughs> fell out of his mouth. It was another night of mixed results and mixed messages for Joe Biden, who said both that he would eliminate the capital gains tax while also saying that he would raise it. But don't worry. Remember, he's a politician. He's not going to do either of those things. And finally, Joe Biden repeatedly said that his son's statement speaks for itself, but asked if, please, at the next debate... His son's statement could also speak for him. The Trump Report starts now. I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. That's right. We have to get right to the music. Welcome to the Trump Report post-debate special. Woo-hoo. Very happy to be here. Uh, <laughs> joined... <laughs> As usually, as usual, by Chelsea Galicia. Chelsea, have you had some cocktails tonight? You don't usually laugh that hard when we do the show at four in the afternoon. When the jokes are funny, they're funny. I, you get like a legit, genuine response. I, I usually get like one every other show, but there were a couple in there. Good Drexel, question. I don't think Nicely I was done. that funny tonight, but I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad to be here, as always. And Tamara, Tamara Brown, down in the end. Yep, that's me. And uh, Scott Moore, on assignment, uh, the, he has to repair the impeachment clock. Uh, it uh, was spinning way too fast, so uh, we, we've decided to give him the night off. Well, when we talk about these debates, it's always good to kind of take a look. We could go through all 12 candidates and rank everybody, but I'd rather say, who do you think had a good night and who do you think had a bad night? Uh, I'll start with you, Tamara. I think that uh, Elizabeth Warren had a good night, and I think probably Beto had a bad night. Oh, Beto has a lot of bad nights. <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, I will say that, not that... Um, I'm in favor of Joe Biden in any way, but he really did, he said a few things that uh, would potentially put me on his side a little bit more. Was it when he accidentally almost said that he fought Would repeal Roe, Roe, Roe v. Wade? Versus Wade? Yeah. <laughs> was that, was that the thing? <laughs> but the, hey, to his credit, there's, there's somewhere, you know, there's that movie Inside Out where you have like all the little people that control your emotions inside your brain. The angry one, the Lewis Black one, was like, no, you can't say that. And he's like, wait, okay. He, he realized it didn't actually come out of his mouth. Well, the Roe v. did. Mm-hmm. But that could have been Roe v. anything, really. Uh, Drexel, uh, best night, or good night, bad night. Who, who do you feel? Each of those. Uh, uh, well, listen. I think we have eleven. We have ten great candidates. Um, all <laughs> but on we the have stage. nine great. Uh, eight, I had to keep seven. Let me think of the ones he's ignoring. He's I know. Ignoring. I know one of them from his face. Uh, Tulsi for sure. Um, Tulsi for sure. And and but I think that I think that Elizabeth Warren had a really great night considering the attacks that she yeah. endured, uh, much like Joe Biden did in the first debate. Uh, I think that Tom Steyer just. I just. I just don't get it. Um, what do you? And, what is there and, not and, to get? Uh, <laughs> why he's on that debate? Well, here, here's the here's the thing that I'll interject. Uh, I think that Chelsea will agree with me uh, that uh, polling notwithstanding, how much better would tonight have been if you could switch out Tom Steyer for Marianne Williamson? Fine. Just from yeah, a comedic sure. standpoint, not not for you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, what did he bring to the conversation? That he's a billionaire. Billionaire who hates who's being willing a, to yeah. Ch- yeah. Uh, 
Which is great. I mean, uh, uh, I, I so think let him be great. a taxpayer. It, it, it helped Tax. Bernie Sanders because his like best line was, "I agree with Bernie Sanders." Well, yeah. you know, but but I also think that when a billionaire is agreeing with you, you've got a problem. But also Tom Steyer, uh, also what? Tom well, Steyer, right, Tom right. Steyer also, uh, you know, in his closing remarks about who your friend was, was talking about how he's fr- somebody that's different from you who might have different views. Talked about uh, a poor woman in South Carolina. Yeah, so that I was don't weird. know. So I don't know why Tom Steyer was up. I there. I don't it's think he understood the question. Uh, yes, or something. and it's like, yeah. oh well, I'm I'm so out of touch that the friend that I identify with the most that changed my mind was this they, poor woman in they South tell Carolina. Me, probably same political party, but just happens yeah. to just, be a different they tell, and race. answer. They tell me her name is such and such, but we just call her the help. Uh, Chelsea, uh, what do you think? Good night, bad night. I. I think Elizabeth Warren had an okay night. I think she had a actually. great night last time. Yeah, decent one, night tonight. Mm-hmm. But the, the last I, time I think was a big I mean, breakthrough her, for her. The like Achilles' heel emerged, like very definitely about her refusal to answer the question about whether Medicare for all is going to raise taxes on the middle class. Yeah. And at this time, it's like you need to be able to have a straightforward answer. You need to be able to level with people, and. Pete Buttigieg, who was like, if you can't answer yes or no to a yes or no question, um, that frustrates people. And I think that's right. And I think Pete actually had a great night. It actually Mm -hmm. made him endear me a little bit more to the moderates-ish like Drexel got all excited for a second. No, I mean, Pete's not even my candidate, but I do appreciate it. Um, (laughs) So I... I think, you know, Tom Steyer had good points when he's saying corporations have bought our government. We need somebody to be saying that over and over until it sinks into people's heads that that's the biggest problem. I wish Pete would have emphasized that a bit more. Um, that I would need to hear him say that in order for me to be like a full-on Pete fan. Um, I think Andrew Yang actually held his own. I don't know how that again. is. How did Alan <laughs> Yang do tonight? <laughs> I, I, he just he made a lot of sense, you know. When people, when we talk about the wealth tax, I think we know the outcome of of the Democratic primary based on who uh, Christian knows their names the best, who, who we can best remember. Yeah, so Tom Steyer is clearly going to win because I, I actually looked up his name. I thought I, I knew I, Andrew Yang's name. I bet name. by I the wrong. end of this panel, you will not remember Tony Steyer. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Tony Steyer would probably get more votes than Tom Steyer. Oh my gosh, or Ted Steyer. Well, look, I mean, I think to Chelsea's point, look, I at the end of the day, every Democrat up there, uh, in some way, talked about corporations sure. and their role in the country. Uh, I don't think that I think on a majority I, I, I think that Did almost that? I think at some point just reading through the notes at some point somebody talks about corporations and their hold on the country. So I don't think it's at this I, I don't think that it is exclusive to one person anymore. Uh, and I think that to unfortunately for Bernie Sanders uh, with everybody talking uh, like this, uh, from a, and, and from the moderate standpoint, um, you know it's gonna it's eventually gonna hurt him in the, in the primary, which is where we're seeing that polling happen right now, where he's not um, uh, where he's not where he's having trouble polling in the top uh, top three. So uh, and Elizabeth Warren is vaulting over him. So uh, so I think that that is something that um, well, I mean to me it's a bad night for Biden because it seems like anytime he goes anywhere he starts to look you know worse and less presidential and it, you know there's the mistakes, but it's also the fact that you had people going after Elizabeth Warren because he's sort of like an afterthought at this point, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, there was a comment made to the the shiny new object, and right now, you know, the shiniest one on the stage is Elizabeth Warren because there seems to be the most buzz about her, and maybe that'll change by the next debate. But, you know, every time you see Biden, it's just like, oh, man, Woody Harrelson is going to crush it when he plays <laughs> Biden in the next uh, debate sketch. So I, I don't know. I mean, I think it wasn't like an exceptionally bad night. And it just it, it seems unfair to point out that, like I said before, that it's a bad night for Beto, because when was it a good night for Beto? And I don't mean just on the debate stage, just in general. And I mean, I think that he's he's carving out you know, a personality, uh, you know, in terms of a, a media presence, that sort of thing. But uh, I, I don't, uh, I don't see Beto somebody is. who's saying that you know. Uh, well, yeah, we got to come and uh, we got to come and take all the guns away. I, I, you know, it's, it's like not helping right. the cause. It's not. It's not helping. You know? and, I, and, I, and I think to to your and I think we talked about in the. F- the first time I was here was in the first debate, right. and we talked about Andrew Yang and 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 universal basic income, which w- is the central 
uh, theme of his campaign. And in the first debate, he was unable to answer the question about universal basic income. Um, and he's not been able to, and I don't think he's been on the debate stage really up until tonight again, uh, been able to answer that question. About what? Uh, about, what about universal, just, just in a way that people can understand. Like, I think it's how it very kind of difficult. It, well, I don't, it's, I'm not normally an advocate of the Joe Rogan podcast on anything against Joe Rogan. But if you listen <laughs> this to This is not the first time you've mentioned it on but, the show. I, you know, it, but it, it's, like, it's, like, it's like how many this, times you Because you've of this cited, particular particular interview. Some of these concepts take a little bit longer than the 75 seconds that they're sure. given to explain. Sure, and I think that if you're going to, if you know that, then have a better answer uh, and mince it down to 75 seconds because I, you know going into that that that's going to be the, the cornerstone. Well, and, and I think that goes back to the Elizabeth Warren thing too, is that if if you're not going to say, if you're not going to say the words that yes, it's going to raise taxes in the middle class, have an answer right. that is actually some kind of answer mm -hmm. instead of like, no, but we're going to talk about this instead. Well, like, no, we don't right. want to. She, but thought she did, though. Right. She, no. kept, she kept saying that the, we're gonna, the corporations are what's going to pay for it. No, right. she kept talking about costs, which we know are related to but are not the same thing as taxes. And the specific question is about taxes. And normally, if she is going to answer a question without taking the bait of what the question is asking, she'll do it better. She'll be able to say, I hear what you're saying, but this is the real issue. But she wasn't able to do that in this situation. She just looks like she's trying to distract us from what the question is, and I think that's really going to hurt her. Right. And Especially I, and right I think, out of the gate. Yeah, and I think to my, what, I, what, I, what I was getting at with, with Beto was that we've seen it across four different candidates. We've seen that with um, with uh, Kamala Harris and her record as a prosecutor here in California. She didn't have a great answer on it in the second debate uh, when Tulsi Gabbard went after her. Uh, we've now seen it in Beto O'Rourke, who spent an entire week talking about mandatory buybacks. Uh, he didn't have a great answer on it. And yeah. and then and, and, and let Pete Buttigieg out chess match him uh, in that moment uh, on the stage. And, and, and then... He was looking like, oh, I don't know how to answer that question anymore. Uh, and the same thing with Elizabeth Warren. So it, it, we, we candidates have got to get to a point where they, if they know that they're going to get asked that question, they've got to be in debate prep, being able to, in 75 seconds, <coughs> be able to answer the question that they know they're going to get. Like, it, literally, you knew you were going to get that question. I mean, if Elizabeth Warren had thought about this a little and wanted to answer, look, taxes are so much more complicated than what you pay for your health insurance or what we would be covered by your taxes. Uh, she, she could have taken the question and, and done a whole tax answer. Mm -hmm. You know, this is credit's going to do this for child, whatever. But, but speak to taxes. People are... They 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 want they're listening for that word and she's got to have a good answer around right. that word. If she had, I would have said she had a great great night, and and the sparring with Budishij I thought was good. I thought I really I'm I, you know I'm I would like a, a what a Warren Budishij. He will ticket. make a great vice president to anybody mm -hmm. on that stage. We've said that and, right and 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 Elizabeth I think she is uh, Senator Warren is certainly trying to not she give Republicans. She would be okay if you called her Elizabeth by the way. <laughs> I don't think she would um, be too upset would about not, that. Is trying not to give Republicans another talking point right now and, yeah. and she knows going into that that's going to be a uh, part of the problem which I don't think that if you asked any Democrat you know we've had this conversation over and over again about uh, middle class tax taxes being raised. It has been the Democrats' problem over the every election cycle and when they get that question on whether or not how they answer it. The only person, to Amy Klobuchar's point, that has said that this, of course we're going to raise tax, we may or may not raise tax in the middle class, is Bernie Sanders, which, which to be to when be honest with you... When did he start saying that? Because I remember I was 2016. Who, yeah, no, because right. I was here in the, the I didn't hear, I wasn't here for the second, or the, our last debate, but the one before that, I specifically remember saying on the second debate... Bernie wouldn't answer the question either. Every time they specifically asked, "Are you going to raise taxes on on?" Because he wanted to get the point in first that overall costs will go down. But then he did answer the question, right. which is something that Elizabeth Warren didn't. What I think was probably damaging is that clip of Biden saying, "If we follow one of their plans, people earning fifty to seventy-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars a year are going to pay five thousand more in taxes." That is going to piss off a lot of well, Americans because I, most I, people, the media. I, I don't know how many of you know uh, school teachers, but the idea that school teachers earn $100,000 yeah, a year. Yeah, he said firemen and, and, and school teachers. Yeah, firemen, <laughs> it's possible because, you know, I mean, th th that's a union. And imagine, you know, what yeah, I, I feel like there's some hazard pay factor in there. But specifically, like teachers, I think that most teachers saw that and was like, oh, I would love to make $100,000 mm -hmm. a year. And even if it meant that my, my tag, Biden specifically Biden said, said, he said, he, when he was he said firefighters and teachers. 
thousand or teachers right. making a yeah. hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Maybe he means professors, tenured Maybe professors. He means as a is what he was referring to. <laughs> right, there's yeah. two yeah. teachers. Yeah, but, but see, now that's something. Yeah, but um, but that is one of the reasons, Chelsea, you were saying that if Elizabeth Warren had talked more specifically about taxes and numbers, because I think that is why I was listening a little bit harder to Biden because. For somebody like me that doesn't feel like you have a great grasp on a lot of the issues, I'm listening to try to understand something better. And so when somebody breaks something down numbers-wise and says to me that we cannot possibly afford the cost, the cost of what Medicare for All would be is mm-hmm. the entire budget that we have. Uh, right, he said thirty budget. trillion over ten years. But right. Bernie's answer, had he been able to answer, was that if we don't do something about it, it's going to cost something like fifty trillion mm-hmm. or something. And I think to, to to Tamara's point, like you know, right before I left, Tim said something to me all the way other. Literally, that was the point that stuck with him that he remembered, which was, oh my gosh, this is how much it's going to cost. So Joe Biden, he doesn't, Joe Biden had a good night for Joe Biden because mm-hmm. nobody, sure. because nobody, he had a terrible nobody night for the what I'm saying is nobody attacked him. He will still be the front runner. He, it will still be a him and Elizabeth at the top. Nobody, nobody went after Joe Biden. And not only did they not go after him, but they were, you know, supporting uh, him gr- on the first uh, questions. hundred percent. The fact that CNN spent two questions only yeah. on the, on the Joe Biden thing, and then they moved on. They didn't even let anybody else get a word in. I was like, okay, they're clearly trying to move on. But, again, a good night for Joe Biden in that sense that he didn't get attacked that hard. And everybody was after Elizabeth. Even Amy Klobuchar, who's on the other end of the stage, going after Elizabeth Warren. I mean, it was wild. Yeah, I mean, you would think that, I don't know. And somebody might have taken, you know, thrown a Hail Mary Mary and just decided, you know what, let's talk a little bit more about this, uh, Joe. You know, so, you know, and... He really didn't want to move on past. It's like, ah, my, you know, my son's statement speaks for itself, which that tells me that was, he didn't read it. That was actually a terrible, terrible answer. Yeah. Well, because he repeated it because he's like, I, instead uh, of saying something else, I'm going to remind you that it speaks for and itself. He did yeah. not answer the question. Yeah. If it was, if it's wrong for him to be there when you're president, why was it okay as vice president? That there, I, I don't know if there's a good answer, but that was the question that he needed to answer well he didn't and i do think that yeah, that I mean, politically that, hurts him that's the lot. definition of the thing that you know you're going to be asked about and you should have your 75 to 90 second answer and just uh, the, ready to the go the statement speaks for itself thing is so, so defensive and so but, it's so telling of who you are when you're called out i mean it could have been a t- say uh, it was wrong. It's wrong now, and it was wrong. Then so, I, I don't know. I think something. the more he talked about it, the more I started to think like, oh wait, maybe there really was something going on there. You know, he's he's, he's awful defensive for uh, something that was not. But I also, but I, I was just going to say, look, at the end of the day, I think the Biden campaign knows that this cycle is going to be is going to try to be over sooner rather than later because we're about to you know, listen. There's so much going on right now that this story is not going to be a story. Come, I, that's what I thought about the emails. Democratic voters aren't really thinking so because. What's going to happen is the Trump campaign can't go into 2020 talking about Hunter Biden. They can go, yeah. they can hurt him now, but they can't go into 2020 if Joe Biden's the nominee talking about that because the Biden campaign will pivot back to the Trump children and pivot back to every other Republican senator, uh, every other Republican uh, oh, poor uh, child. Tiffany, why right. did they go after her? <laughs> in, what did she in, do? In, 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 in Congress, right? So it's going to put attention on a lot yeah. of folks' families, and I don't think that the president really wants to do that. So Joe Biden's saying, "You can come at me now." Or this can, or this can be a thing later. But right now, you really, right now, the president's campaign is trying to wound Joe Biden so they don't have to face him in the general election, which is exactly what Joe Biden was up there saying tonight, which is exactly the strategy that they should be doing. You eliminate it as early as possible, which is why it, it, this would be a, a continued story if every other Democratic candidate up there had got up there and said something about Joe Biden's son, in, in not only supporting him but also being critical of him. It, it, the fact that they didn't means that this would be a non-story for Democrats going into next week. Uh, in the chat, uh, Lori Tuttle points out that uh, Biden seemed unhinged and confused. That's hardly a headline at this point. <laughs> um, Drexel, you might take issue with this. Tulsi had a great night. Oh. Um, <laughs> I know that uh, really? that you have a strong why. opinion on uh, Tulsi Gabbard, but do, if you put a mountain of your feelings about her, is it all outweighed by the fact that she's friends with Trey Gowdy? Well, it's so funny because when she answered that question, I, I I thought she was gonna say Assad either as a joke, oh my God. either as a either as a, either as a joke, 
just to, either, well, well, here's the thing. Here, either as a joke or just to kind of Wait, like what question are you talking the, the, the friendship, about, the friendship about question. Who, like, yeah, who, you know, the, the, the Ellen amazing. George W. Bush question. Yeah. She could have, she could have easily <laughs> joked about that, but I mean, she made a calculated question. I mean, who wants to be like? It was, it's like the Ted Cruz question that, um, or the the Ted Cruz answer that uh, Booker, gave. Booker gave, and Be I was like, I was like, who? says Ted Cruz, the most unlikable Republican. I mean maybe uh, that's why he ever. went for that. Right. Answer. So so I, I think I think with 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 Tulsi Gabbard and I said this about Tulsi Gabbard and I was having this conversation about Tulsi Gabbard with somebody the other day, which was Tulsi Gabbard on paper Aside from her stance on LGBTQ issues or her former past on LGBTQ issues, uh, aside from her uh, coddling of Assad and 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 if you took Tulsi Gabbard at the regime change, at the endless, at the end of wars, with her military record, being from Hawaii, being a, a, a woman of color, I think on paper she sounds like the greatest vice presidential candidate that we could have ever put up there. But she has problematic views and has had problematic views and has not been able to explain away the Assad thing. You know, there's because if you remember with Barack Obama, Barack Obama won saying, I did not vote for the Iraq war. I do, I do not believe in regime. These are the things that Democratic voters have voted on in the past. Tulsi Gabbard has had a hard time explaining that away. And well, I think, so, I think the situation right now with Syria and Turkey makes Tulsi Gabbard's position of, um, of getting out of the Middle East look like it's out of touch. We're like, wait a minute. Trump is saying, let's get out, although it's not really. He's just reshuffling them around in the Middle East, saying, let's get out. And everybody, Democrats and Republicans, <laughs> are up in arms about it. Right. So if she if she keeps fighting for, we got to get out, we got to get out. Meanwhile, everybody's like, oh, my God, we're leaving our allies left to be slaughtered. She looks like she is completely right. and totally out of touch. She actually, I mean, the situation right now actually plays for nuance. It's not that we should uh, get out altogether, and it's not that we should, you know, sit there and, and and be in everybody's business all the time, but there has to be a middle ground. And before I was a little bit more, um, I was on Tulsi's side about we have to, we, we should get out. But then when you look at these kinds of specific situations, like what is happening with the Kurds right now, you know, we can't just up and leave. And so there has to be some balance. And I think that she now looks totally out of balance to just have an extreme position on that. And I think to your point, she had a whole, she, you know, she did a little bit of one of those questions all about being the commander in chief. It was the question on, 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 um, uh, you know, on whether or not Bernie Sanders was too old or any of the other three candidates up there that were over 70 were too old. And if you're going to have a conversation of being, being a commander in chief and you're going to make that central to your campaign, you better understand, to what your point was, nuances of being uh, 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 on the ground and understanding um, the intricacies of Middle East policy, yeah. um, of, of, of global policy, and, yeah. and how to maneuver around and, Russia and, and some of these other things. that actually makes me feel better about Mayor Pete, because one of the things that makes me nervous about Mayor Pete is how Obama-esque he sounds, and he is, and it's like, okay, it's you think that he's thing. great, but then when you... <laughs> it works for Obama. <laughs> certainly Yeah, but, but then when push comes to shove, he he didn't get a lot done. He was not nearly as progressive as he sort of sold himself to be. Um, and he got us involved in a lot of M Middle East problems. I mean, I, I don't even know if we're still at bombing those seven countries, but at some point we were bombing seven countries in, uh, in that region. But Pete, having served in the military in Afghanistan, makes me think that he is more sensitive, knowledge, uh, knowledgeable, and aware of the situation. Um, and so I, I feel like he's got that going uh, better than Barack Obama. He's got the experience there, plus the charismatic thing. And so that's why, for me, Mayor Pete, you know, came up a few notches. Right, which would make book. again make him a great vice president. Uh, Tamara, do you agree with Kamala Harris that the most important issue facing the nation is Donald Trump getting kicked off Twitter because uh, she <laughs> oh was determined to not back God. down from that? Yeah, when Elizabeth that was, Warren wouldn't say that. I'm like, I was well, little, of course. Like, why does she care? Yeah, I was confused at that point. Like this, she was talking about it. As, this was the first I'm hearing about it. I don't know about. I, you guys. I had heard Did about she it have before. That campaign yeah. before, but it was just like. Yeah, the, the gravity that she gave to that issue, and I didn't even fully understand what she was trying to say, like, kick him off Twitter, 
because that's going to hurt the tech companies? I didn't get well, what she I, was I trying to say. Well, I think it's because his messages are inaccurate and it's in violation of the terms of service. Yeah, but which she I is, don't. I, I honestly don't about, know how it's spelled out. It's I thought, like you if have I to remember prove he's correctly, lying or, the question was about tech companies mm-hmm. having too much. Yeah. Power. So I don't understand how kicking yeah, and that's Donald when, Trump. That's off when of Jimmy Twitter Yang mentioned Bing. Jimmy yeah. Yang. Is there a Twitter <laughs> he's great, account? He's great in Silicon Valley. Dedicate, is there a Twitter account dedicated to responding to each of Trump's tweets and saying where he's factual? I'm, factual. I'm sure there's I, 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 by the way, 50, there's, of them. there should be. Uh, but uh, if, if there is, they're not doing a good job of advertising it. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you're that's out the there. the account that I want to follow. Yeah, that should be you, R. Scott Brown. Like and yes, fa- a shout out to R. Scott Brown, who's back in the chat tonight. He's been very busy the last like few weeks. Each one as they come out. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure that exists. Like, there's not, usually some be- fact check like every time Rogue you look at White it. House staffer, and that, mm-hmm. that a Twitter handle, Rogue White House staffer. Yeah, staffer. they don't necessarily reply to to Trump, but um, but yeah, I didn't understand I, I, what what Kamala think... was trying to say, and yeah. I also um, when she chimed in, <clears throat> I I like her, but she um, when she chimed in about. Um, when they were talking about health care and she came in with, um, you know, you cannot tell a woman what to do with her body. I just feel like at this point you're not talking to Republicans. So when they would spend so much time on an issue that's like, yes, we know. Everybody agrees with you on this. Like, why are well, you Well, I think there's something to be time? said for it being important to bring it up because I guess you had said that they hadn't spent time on yeah. it. They'd and they talked, hadn't. They'd spent, uh, so I, she if and you could Booker, take the number of minutes they've talked about health care in general without talking about that, I mean, it's, it's a valid point. Mm-hmm. It's also to remind people, like, oh, yeah, that's more important than a lot of this stuff. But, but yeah, I mean, you, you're you not speaking to a national audience. You're speaking to Democrats uh, who whole, are going to agree with you. The whole health care debate, when they would take so much time saying, you know, uh, so and so got kicked off of their health plan because they had a terminal illness. It's like we, yes, we understand that. Like that's not the issue here. All of how much time was spent reiterating things that we all already agree on, <laughs> right? Which I, which I'm inclined to, uh, you know, blame the moderators who, you know, they see the other debates. They know what's been covered. It, it, you know, there there was a little bit of, of difference like, in this, uh, but it's a lot of like let's hit the same things that we. Kamala said, about. "I've seen more autopsy reports. I've been to. I, I mean, I've sure. heard this like right let's and and new line. like Bernie clearly thinks that I wrote the damn bill is his mm-hmm. stairway to heaven because he <laughs> trots it out every time. It's like we know it's funny one time, right? All right, it's. It's it's like a recurring character in Saturday Night Live. We we've seen it. All right, great, good for you. You wrote the bill. Can you talk about something else? What were you going to say? Uh, I was just going to say, women's reproductive rights has not come up in a debate since we started. Um, and tonight was the first night that we didn't hear about immigration. So one thing came off the table. One thing yeah. came on the table. So uh, and 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 the the criticism was that. Uh, at a time where women, uh, women's reproductive rights are under attack, that dem- the, the Democrats in, in a debate uh, setting have not been able to talk about them. This is why we heard a lot about um, uh, women's reproductive rights, and the and the same line of codifying Roe v. Wade was across the board. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that that's just something that uh, is just by design because of the nature of the situation. How do you think it would go for the people, for independence, say, if the Democrats were to go at the abortion issue by saying we want to reduce the number of women who have to who, who choose to undergo abortions by you know, some of that it is because they find out something is is medically uh, what is it incompatible with life and that is one reason that women choose to undergo the procedure and sometimes it's because women their their lives are not in a place where they can believe that they can handle the responsibility so what if it was we want to reduce the number of abortions by providing birth control for all. You choose your choice of IUDs or whatever who, it is that you who want. Who quoted Hillary? Uh, that Tulsi Gabbard. Yeah, that, 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 well, uh, I mean, yeah, that's that, true. That it was Tulsi Gabbard. Yeah. Um, make it available but and I, I affordable to, and, and, rare. and rare. Yeah, and, and rare is the. I, I think that's exactly what you're saying. I, I would have. I, I. I don't think I, I heard that, but. When, when it's all about, a, you know, a woman's right to choose, it's her body, it is just playing to the people who already accept that point of view. And uh, it doesn't do anything for anybody in the middle where it's like, we don't want to have a, you know, a high number of these. It's it's not a great situation, really, for any woman to want to, to I don't know of anybody who's thrilled to have an abortion. So let's, let's agree that we don't want to have 
We want to reduce the number. How can we get there? And they would sound more reasonable and more appealing to, I think, a broader swath of people. I think the closest we got to that was her saying that, just reiterating Hillary's quote about it being rare, and then also when she said she thinks that they should not be legal for the third trimester. So uh, she th- actually say that in she the said debate that. tonight. Mm-hmm. Right, I, I definitely How missed did that. I miss no, that? I, I'm surprised I missed <laughs> that because we tuned out Tulsi Gabbard. Um, but <laughs> yeah. um, but but I th- also think that for a major not a majority for a, a good portion of Americans on on abortion uh, on this issue, um, it is more of a religious issue than it is a. A a a, yeah. a a a scientific medical mm-hmm. issue. So when we are talking about Democrats voting for women's rights and and and, and women's rights to choose, you you you're certainly not going to convince the religious right um, who have been fighting, or at least uh, particularly Catholics who have been fighting uh, in schools teaching uh, sex education and and pulling condoms out of school and all of those things. Like you're certainly not going to reach those th- those Americans who, right. who who on that particular those issue. Those are of the of the extreme. Absolutely, I think you're right, and I think that. In talking about uh, health care and reproductive rights, that religion should be raised to say that you know a lot of people are against it based on religious reasons, and we understand and respect that. Yet, that cannot be the basis of how we legislate because we have a separation of church and state. And you know who I think would have de- who would have been able to explain that better had he got Pete. a chance to, was Pete Buttigieg. Mm-hmm. If Pete Buttigieg had been able to answer that question, which I don't have an answer from him. I, I thought I you were going to say he, Ron Reagan in those commercials <laughs> those about commercials, separating right. church and state. Um, Do you mean Ron Reagan Jr.? Ron Ron Reagan or, Jr. Yeah, Ron he would have been great in that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Pete Buttigieg would have been able to answer that question yeah. because he has been able to uh, speak about religion in a way that I think identifies uh, with a uh, about 40 to 50 percent of Democratic voters who are religious. So, I, 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 yes. But it's unfortunate that he didn't get a chance because I'm on the same page with you. I think he would have done a right. great job, and I think that would have helped Democrats in general with their position on reproductive rights. I, I If I hear, like, it's a woman's right to do with her, with her body what she wants, I, it just makes me cringe yeah. every time it's not helping. Sure, I mean, I it agree. is a great talking. That's, I was yeah. thinking that exact same thing. I mean, I, I mean, I'm not going to argue well, with you. I don't know. Panel, no, do you think Drexel <laughs> and I should uh, take I'm not going to take it that way. Well, uh, I, I want to know your thoughts on that. I mean, No, no I mean, I, I think that when it comes to pro-choice, you're saying it's your right to choose. So if, you're, if it is your right to choose, it's your right to choose if... You know, you find out that uh, you know your child might be born with a you know a, a defect that would really impinge a quality of life, but you are also allowed to choose the very same thing that to have the abortion if it's like, wait, I really don't want one right now, mm-hmm. and it's not even like I couldn't take care of it. It's just like, yeah, I don't, I, I just, I just don't want it for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. So the idea of trying to reduce the numbers. I think is good as a as a campaign strategy, but if you actively start taking steps to do it, I wonder how much of your base is going to be like, wait, what are you trying to do? I think the importance is to reiterate the statistics about in states where abortion is difficult, where clinics are few and far between and underfunded. Those are the states where the Google searches for home abortion are are yeah. at their highest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. the point is. When b- abortion is not available to you, you're not reducing abortions. When a woman right. wants to have an abortion, she's going to have one. I feel like the people who are religious need to understand that it's not a matter of not making it available is going to cut down the amount of abortions. That's not going to happen. Right. I mean, Elizabeth Warren talked about, you know, before Roe v. Wade when, you know, wealthy women were able to get abortions. Mm-hmm. But, of course, that didn't mean that less wealthy women also didn't try to get abortions, and sometimes they were successful, and sometimes, you know, obviously their 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 lives were put at risk. I think we need to make a talk about this more because I think, at least when I think of Medicare for all, because you think of people that are 65 and older, you don't think of birth control being among the, the the things that are offered in the program. So I think that the party should, would be well served to to talk about that because I think it'll bring more independence into the fold. Uh, sort of indirectly related to this was this idea that uh, Mayor Pete has of uh, bringing the Supreme Court to 15. And uh, this was the first I had heard of that, 
where you he have said it me too. I, well, this is the first I yeah. heard of it yeah. because I was too busy reading up on Tulsi Gabbard <laughs> and and uh, Scott Yang. But I <laughs> I, 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 I like so, this bit, Christian. Keep it going. Let's get it. We got a lot of weeks until he oh, drops God. out. So we'll, you know, oh, if God. he gives me a thousand dollars, I'll remember his name. That uh, he doesn't even have to give it to me every month, just once. <laughs> but uh, th- so this idea, and I think you know, Joe Biden was like, you know, I, I don't want to pack the courts because we do it now. It's sort of like the filibuster. It's like, great, you do it now, and then the other party is going to do it, you know, and you're, you're going to end up in the, you're going to end up with this being a much bigger problem. I thought that it gets into this like weird, almost like NCAA tournament sort of rules where it's like, well, you know, five of them are only appointed by a unanimous vote by the others. And it's like, well, it's just too complicated. Right. Uh, I, I don't know that that's the solution, but uh, Chelsea, I think you've uh, been in a courtroom more than I have. So uh, what do you think about that? Well, actually, workers' comp is not exactly the kind of courtroom like you see on Law and Order, so it's it's debatable about whether. I mean, I would. What about on Law and Order SVU? That's the only one I watch. Um, no, it's I the definitely same kind not. Of not okay. Yeah, not that's that fair. Kind. But yeah, so, but I I I understand that it's complicated, um, but I do think that it's an important conversation because the Supreme Court, being as politicized as it is, or we could just do something like. I don't know how we, we could do it, but we'd have to go back and reverse what Mitch McConnell did. I don't know. You have to that the the I mean I, I just I don't know, but when, so when you, Mitch you, McConnell you mean put Merrick Garland on the Supreme Court. I mean Is that at what least give him hearings because when Mitch McConnell took it upon himself to control you know, that left the seat vacant until, you know, the next election, that totally threw things off. That was not the way that the founders intended the Supreme Court nominating process to go. And so now they're all scrambling to figure out a situation that would prevent that problem from happening again, where they could just, I don't know, maybe pass a law, even an amendment to say that... the the hearings must be held within I don't know thirty days of the the nomination, r- irrespective of whether right. we're in an election year. But because I legitimately don't understand it, so if tomorrow uh, President Trump wanted to nominate three new justices for the Supreme Court, well, they ha- well, well so what no- has to happen? That's what I'm wondering. You know, what's well, the next you'd, step? You'd, ha- you'd have to have uh, either three people resign or die. Right, but the, but this idea that Mayor Pete wants fifteen. So how do you get to that point where you can have more? I mean, it's it's it, it doesn't say. I, I, Constitution doesn't only say. Nine, right, doesn't only say, yeah, only just, nine probably would be <laughs> would be deciding each case, but you'd have like a pool, like to your NCAA, you would have a. So there'd team, be like the playing game, and yeah. and I guess perhaps they would rotate so that there are not the same nine players on the court the oh, entire I, time. Okay. I would like that idea it's, a lot more than anything else. Yeah, because yeah. I was thinking, how would fifteen? It's still an odd number, so it's like. I would still see the same problem that we have with nine, is that it, it would still fall back and forth, back and forth, depending on who's, who's in had, charge you of know, that. Rotating. And I don't know how they would do But the problem is, is that, yeah, this is kind of a complicated uh, solution to what could be a an easier fix, which is just to legislate oh, against what Mitch McConnell did. The problem with doing that is how do you take up a piece of legislation to undo what the sitting Senate Majority Leader has done. He's obviously not going to take that up for a vote. So it makes it difficult, and that's why we're left with difficult, complex um, choices about, you know, should we have 15? Uh, in the chat, the demon knot points out the idea of uh, term limits or mm-hmm. maybe like 20 years or something for being on the Supreme Court. I think there's mm-hmm. something to be said We've for that. We've talked about that. Yeah, right. I mean, uh, term limits uh, across the board for elected officials, for sure. I think that's a great idea. Uh, for the Supreme Court, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, where however your politics lie, you love that Ruth Bader Ginsburg is hanging on, you know, and, and not retiring, whether her health dictates it or not. You know, I think that if you reach, I, it doesn't even have to be a certain age. It's just mm-hmm. like, well, you have this many years. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there's something to be said for that. But uh, do you think that's problematic for any reason legally standing, uh, Chelsea? Uh, well, no, other than just this, just sort of how it's always been been done. But I, I think that if we're going to talk about term limits, certainly we've got to start with congressional term limits. Um, and, you know, that's a tough sell to Congress themselves. We would have to have some very brave, you know, senators <coughs> and, and House members who would say, I'm I'm willing to, to put a cap on how long I can be here. And uh, I don't know how many of them actually would. Um, 
I don't know, you know, term limits, I don't think would have prevented this Mitch McConnell, Merrick Garland issue that we had. So it's a good idea, but I don't think that it is specifically going to solve the issue with for which this, this whole conversation is taking place for. Go ahead, Drexel. No, I, I mean, I, I don't know, you know, there are certain, you know, they say presidents always get one, one big one big policy thing that they can move. I, I don't think they were going to get a president that's going to move on on judicial reform like this yeah. any time in this century. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is obviously a conversation that is, um, you know, we we can we can barely get the equal rights amendment. <coughs> you know, okay. uh, Pat, you cannot. Yeah. You know, yeah. so th th this, like, until we can get that, uh, uh, um, you know, we're only a couple states away from 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 it um, <laughs> from having Congress, you know, pass it again and then ratify again. So I, I think that there, it's hard enough to get that passed across the board, let alone judicial reform. Um, but one of the things that really struck out to me in that whole section on judicial reform, which was, uh, you know, everybody talked about not court packing. Uh, Joe Biden talked about uh, helping defeat Robert Bork, uh, which if somebody was smart on that stage, they would have said, yes, you helped uh, defeat Robert Bork, yet somehow inadvertently helped put T Clarence Thomas, Clarence on, Thomas the, yeah. on, on the Supreme Court. So, you know, it, it's almost like you've got these amateurish debaters up there, and we're all sitting back there going, well, why didn't, why... How is it possible that you can't shoot back, you know, certain things that, that may or may not, you're right? Uh, yeah, I, I have an extra water back, that I that back. I have not touched yet, so please have that. Um, <laughs> shoot you. back. Um, She's allergic to Tulsi Gabbard, in case, <laughs> in case you were wondering. I just uh, got it. I mean, I would be, um, <laughs> I would, I, I would be too. Um, so there, you know, there were just a couple of things uh, that uh, in that section uh that I would have shot back to Joe Biden about um, being a Joe Biden fan, not that he's my candidate, but um, but also it's the same thing with Elizabeth Warren and, and the the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. You know, I was I knew as soon as she said, you know, I created this agency. Joe Biden was going to come back with, but I helped you get those votes. It was almost he was it was ready at the ready, and it threw her off. Well, especially <laughs> because he said you did a hell of a job. Your job. You know, so he didn't actually say whatever he said wasn't a real sentence. So I think she's like, uh huh. Well, no, uh, but, but he followed but when, up when with. he was trying to take credit, and she's like, yeah, I really want to thank President Obama, and everybody right. knows, Ooh. right, right, right. right. I was just like, all right, so th there wasn't a lot of that in this one, and I think we had a couple of, of those moments in each of the previous debates. Well, when Biden said that um, I'm the only one that did this, I'm yeah. the only one that did this. Well, you're also the only one that voted in favor of. The, yeah, the Iraq war. Right. There were like three right. things. He kind of uh, opened himself up to to yeah. that criticism. However, no, no, no. But he only takes credit for the good stuff Obama did. Right. So just right. remember that. That's all he's. He wasn't there on those other days. But he only went on the good days. I think with Joe Biden, I think if you're the average American listening to some of the things, listen, you might disagree with Joe Biden on on where he's. <laughs> Not where he stands on issues, but to an average American who listens to what he says, to what Tamara was saying earlier, people get it. They're like, I get it. I understand exactly what you're saying. And I want it, the, the Biden campaign is going to stick with this return to normalcy. And that is going to work for them. And the only way to knock Joe Biden out is for them people to, to be for times like the Bork thing, for people to be reminded of certain things. If not, come Iowa, it's going to be Biden, Buttigieg and Warren. It's going to be one of those three. And then when they get to New Hampshire, that's what's going to happen. And then we get to Super Tuesday. The fact that Kamala Harris isn't even very, is, is having a hard time polling in the state of California, it's either going to go to Biden or it's going to go to Warren. So right. they, they, people have got to start either knocking folks out, which you know a lot of candidates started to do, tried to do with Elizabeth Warren today. Um, they try, they think that Joe. It, it's crazy that they still haven't been going after Joe Biden tonight. That's what I'm. That's we what have, we only have a few <laughs> moments, and uh, you know, you were talking about the idea that the Biden campaign has this return to normalcy, and uh, I thought it was interesting that Mayor Pete brought up the idea that, like, you know, at some point Donald Trump's not going to be president anymore. And that morning, it's not going to go back to normal because we're already too far down that road. <clears throat> we had the circumstances that led to that. Uh, and I guess uh, in our final moments, Tamara, do you do you agree with Mayor Pete that uh, we're we're already so far past screwed that you can try and make it a little bit better, but it's not yeah, going to be back. To I was going to bring that up, but I, I I guess I had thought that Klobuchar said that, but somebody said that. I really um, thought it was him, but yeah, whoever yeah, said whoever it, whoever said it, 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 it might have said it yeah, okay, so it was Pete, but yeah, I was thinking that too. Whoever said that, like. I mean, yeah, that's exactly correct. It's it's not. I mean, yes, Trump is currently the problem, but take him out of office, we still have all of the people who 
put him there and we're we in the, the position system to that gave we have rise. the system yeah. that gave rise to that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's absolutely right. Uh, Drex, are you inclined to <laughs> agree, or, uh, or are you just holding out hope that, like, no, everything's going to be great? It's going to be like 2008 all over again. No, and when for, I think when people know, talk Street. about normalcy, they're not talking about normalcy. They're, they're talking about the presidency in general. Sure, the yeah, president, yeah. not not like how the pre, how the pres, the office of the president operates. Yeah. Less of is America going to be normal? We know that that ship has sailed at least for another two election cycles uh, until we get rid of the problems that this administration has caused. So I think that when people are looking for normal, they're looking for, you know, a Barack Obama normal or 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 listen, for all intents and purposes, the the Bush administration was shitty administration, but they operated normally no, within the confines, right? No, but it, it, it right? worked like a good right, government. Like an actual like, government. It worked like the government works in right. a way that you can, like, oh, I disagree with right. that, but this is this the process. Worked, right. And, you know, they filled out the I paperwork don't know. and got things I would things be done. really pissed if we went back to that. If you went back to the the to Bush the, administration, that <laughs> okay. or even Clinton right, or, you, even, you, or even you, Obama. Okay. Like, so wor- worst case scenario, uh, twenty twenty one. Do you want it to be just like more Trump? Do you want it to be just like more George W. Bush or just like Clinton? It's one of those three. Oh God. <laughs> so it, you don't want. So you're like you don't want any of that. I. You don't think two of those would be better than than Trump? I mean, yes. But, but it would not, be, not better enough. No, it would, sure. the, the same system of corruption would 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 be underlying I, there. And I mean, I think Trump, whoever the next president is, the same system of corruption is going to be in, pre- um, in place. Unless Even if it's somebody who really wants to sign something on day one, it's still going to be there. You're going to just try and fight it. Or not. But well, if you're I mean, Elizabeth guess, Warren, you're going to try and fight it. Exactly. That I, I could just see that every person... Can you... I've said this before. Can you imagine that if... Um, Elizabeth Warren is Senate Majority Leader, and Joe Biden tries to nominate a former lobbyist uh, for or the, Hunter Biden. Just picking the name out of a former of lobbyist for you know Exxon to the EPA. That Senate Majority Leader Elizabeth Warren is going to let that fly, and and is going to. It depends on what's in it for her. No, absolutely <laughs> not. I you know I do think that she really is genuine, authentic, sincere in her 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 vision of big structural change. And I think people like that, and I also think people are afraid of it. So we need somebody a little bit more moderate as, you know, VP to balance her out because I think psychologically, even though people think they want change, on another level, they are afraid of change. So we are almost out of time. We're practically out of time. But uh, the news sort of broke after the fact, you know, Bernie referenced that he has a big event in Queens coming up. And uh, he said a special guest was going to be there. And uh, I was hoping it was Mr. Met. But I think that the news (laughs) is saying that uh, it'll be Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez who's going to endorse him. And also uh, Tlaib and Omar are also going to. The whole squad is going to endorse him. So there's been... uh, Specifically by you, Drexel, you, you've been very sort of dismissive of Bernie. Do you think that helps just polling, not even saying becoming them, do you think that that helps at all with the Bernie movement, the the polling, you know? does it is it a shot in the arm but that's momentary, or do you think that could actually help his campaign to have like those kind of endorsements? I, I don't think it I think it just strengthens the base that he already has. Um, I don't think that that's going to help him at all uh, because he already has a, a good a good portion of the youth vote. and and those three, as strong as they are, uh, are, are, are are strong on a on a, a national level that is to a specific voter who is a specific demographic. Yeah. Where I look at folks like Katie Porter here in California, or I look at folks, Katie, uh, Hill. Uh, Katie Hill here in California, uh, who are who are also in that freshman class. Uh, but they're going to be more Warren-ish. And, and, and I mean, who especially are, Katie and, Porter. Right. And, and and listen, if you listen to them, that's I mean, Katie Porter was a Elizabeth Warren like protege. protege yeah. But you know, those are the those freshman senators. So it's either going to be one side of freshman senators versus another side of freshman senators. And and just be, and as it goes back to what I've always said from the beginning, even when we were doing Trump Report last year uh, during the during the the primary which was just because you're the loudest does not make you the majority. And in this case, uh, the squad is very loud uh, and, and they will not move the needle on Democratic voters, whether we like it or not. And, and on top of that, um, two New Yorkers, uh, Bernie and and uh, and um, uh, Alexander Ocasio-Cortez, um, certainly aren't going to move middle America any. That, that's just not going to mm-hmm. go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's I, fair. I actually think that the endorsement will actually help Elizabeth Warren. 
Interesting, mm. because uh, you think people are off put by the three of them, uh, and that I they're more inclined to. I think that people to... see them as you know bold and but also extreme left, and so you know being you know Bernie and extreme left gives cover to Warren to be more left than Biden without saying seeming like the crazy socialist. Uh, what are your yeah. thoughts, Tamara? Do you think it's going to, do you agree with sort of this consensus I, I or do you gonna think it's going to help? Drexel pretty much summed up what I was saying, that we, you know, if if AOC had to, it was eligible for being a part of the presidential uh, nomination, she, she wouldn't, I don't know if I was about to say maybe she wouldn't have even made it this far, but that's not true. But she, well, but she, she could have. She could have been one of twelve sliver. people. But yeah. I know what you're saying. Like that, nationwide, yeah, her, 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 she doesn't have well, the numbers to carry. She's also very new to the whole process. You know, G- give it a few more years. I, I know it. Yeah, obviously, Obama hadn't been around for very long when he ran for president. But yeah, let's see where she is in a few years. I don't uh, think she's constitutionally eligible. But like, it's more the hypothetical. Right. If she was 35 right. now, but just got in. So. So, yeah, we can obviously, yeah, let's revisit it when she's, at, you know, maybe maybe when she's 36. But by that time, you know, the nation will have also aged. And yeah. maybe at that point there would be a wider, you know, uh, I'm not saying she could sway the whole all yeah. of middle America, but she would probably have at that point a wider base. Well, we are out of time for tonight. Uh, the next debate will be on Wednesday, November 20th. Chelsea's going to be in Hawaii, but uh, hopefully Thanks the rest of us will be Thanks for telling the world. Hey. At least don't tell them the island. She's going to see Tulsi. <laughs> yeah, she's going to be knocking on doors and uh, trying. Uh, and uh, so, but you can find us at our normal time uh, Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific here on AfterBuzz TV. And uh, Drexel, I think you, you announced it on Facebook. You're going to be doing some work for the BBC during I, the election I, cycle. I am. I've been doing it for the for mo- most of the year, but yeah. uh, every once in a while, I they ask cool. me to come on and do some political. Some do of they this. make you use an accent, or you can just use? Uh, I don't. It's all U.S. politics. Oh, okay. I, I so do. I do. Right. <laughs> but it, next time we come back here, I'd like you to do an accent for us. Absolutely. But I do hope you're. Uh, you don't get too big for us, and you can <laughs> still come back. Not. Tamara, where can people find you? Find me on Instagram at Hey Tamara. And Drexel at Drexel Heard. And Chelsea at Chelsea Galicia. And you can find me at Christian DMZ and the show itself at Trump Report ABTV. As I said, we will be back Tuesday at 4 Pacific. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks for staying up late with us. Bye. Bye. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. (laughs) The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.